perfect. I've been better organized than I thought. Um, just to recap, um, things we need for today's class. Um, we are doing one drink today. You will need rum. Rum is key. Everybody needs rum anyway. A lot of people just don't understand or don't know that they need rum in their lives. Oh, John, a man after my own heart, snap. Um, Mount Gay, uh, I think uh, and it's my go-to rum. I'm not sure what everybody else has got here today. Um, we're doing a cocktail which will work with pretty much any type of rum you have. Um, so if you don't have Mount Gay, like um, myself and John, that's no problem at all. Um, and that being said, in all honesty, um, a more correct rum for this drink would probably be a white, unaged rum, like say Bacardi Carta Blanca. But I use Mount Gay in pretty much everything I make at home because I just really like the rum. Um, we've still got another couple of minutes before I'm going to start, so I'm going to astound you with delightful Mount Gay facts. Um, it's from the island of Barbados, um, uh, which is where the word rum first appeared in print. Uh, somebody wrote a letter back to London stating, the chief fuddling they make on the island, rum bullion alias kill devil, is a hot, hellish and terrible liquor. Um, and so we saw the first uh, moment of rum appear. Um, interestingly, uh, Mount Gay popped up on the island um, about 50 years after that. that. That letter was sent back to London in 1653. Um, and John will probably be able to tell us um, the year that the Mount Gay distillery was opened uh, on the island of Barbados um, by um, scrutinizing carefully all the lettering or numbering in red on the front of the label. Yes, um, <laughs> 1703. So Mount Gay have been making rum on the island of Barbados. There we go, thank you. Uh, since 1703, um, if my maths is correct, that is 318 years. Let's call it 317, just to factor in some wriggle room for months of the year. Um, I figure any business that's been around for 317 years making the same product kind of knows what they're talking about. Um, it is the oldest continuously running rum distillery in the world and one of the oldest distilleries full stop in the world. Um, and one of the reasons why it's been, it's been running for that long is uh, Barbados is a very flat island, uh, despite the name of the rum, bizarrely. Um, it, it lies out to sea a little bit more than those sort of leeward uh, Caribbean islands. Um, and it was just difficult to navigate to through. Um, so it actually remained in British hands, um, untouched uh, for the duration of that time until now, unlike pretty much every other Caribbean country, which changed hands on a regular basis between the English, the French, the Spanish, and the Dutch. If my memory serves me correct. Um, Mount Gay rum. Uh, my favorite fact about Mount Gay rum is that Mount Gay rum is older than cognac. It is older than the concept of cognac and that in Mount Gay had been making rum at their distillery, the same distillery they're using today for 25 years before somebody ever put the word cognac down on paper. So it's older than the concept of the idea of cognac, just to put it in perspective. And they do a range of rums and they do that. They do a uh, very lovely exo rum if you like sipping rum or whiskey. But anyway, um, I think that's all of um, uh, my facts on rum. I think we sort of get stuck into the class itself. Um, Anastasia is here um, uh, from a small world. Hello, Anastasia. Um, Anastasia was going to hide from you all today because she made that amateur mistake of trying to fix a contact lens with her finger after she'd been chopping chilies. Um, and has been a delight um, uh, to watch bouncing around the screen um, up until now. Um, anyway, welcome along everybody. Uh, so we're going to be doing one cocktail today. Uh, we're going to be doing a daiquiri. Um, but before we do that, um, I thought I would read you a couple of um, phrases from one of my favorite books on cocktails. This is from the 1940s, written by a guy called David Embry, who never worked for a single day of his life behind a bar, but wrote what is by far and away one of the best books on cocktails I've ever come across. Mostly because he's an opinionated old grouch, um, and that really comes through in his writing, and it's really lovely to read. It makes you smile all the time. But um, one of the first things he says, um, which I think is really relevant for this class um, and for all of you, um, is that anyone can make good cocktails. Um, the art of mixing drinks is no deep and jealously guarded secret, nor is it a skill to be acquired, um, only as a result of years of painstaking effort. It can be learned practically overnight. And it really can. It's as difficult as learning a new recipe 
um, and not a complicated recipe because we don't really have a whole lot of different cooking techniques. Uh, he then goes on to write, um, the average host who makes no pretense of being an expert on cocktails can get along very nicely with a knowledge of how to mix a half dozen good drinks. In fact, if he or she can only make two or three and always makes them well, they will stand much higher in the regard of their guests. Um, and I think that is definitely words to, um, to live by. Um, we're doing what is possibly one of the simplest cocktails of all time um, uh, today, a daiquiri. It's three ingredients. We're using rum, we're using lime, and we're using sugar syrup. Um, if you haven't made sugar syrup, now is the time to do it. Uh, caster sugar um, and cold tap water stirred together in equal parts. Um, after about two or three minutes, we'll yield you with sugar syrup. Um, so if you want to get that ready, I'm going to talk for at least another two or three minutes, I hate to tell you. Um, so you've got plenty of time to do that. Um, so those three ingredients, and I guess where I'm going with that, with that Embry quote, is I want you to make this the year that instead of turning up to a friend's place for a party with a bottle of hastily purchased wine from the nearest bottle shop or um, corner store, buy a bottle of rum, buy some limes, make some sugar syrup and make daiquiris for everybody when you get there. And it will make for a far more memorable or less memorable, depending on how many you have, um, evening than will um, Wolf Blast Shiraz. Uh, anyways, um, enough on that. Um, the drink we're doing today, um, a daiquiri, is going to be a shaken drink. So I guess a little bit on shaking cocktails. Um, shaking for cocktails is a little bit like cooking for food, uh, to use a cooking analogy, um, in that if you don't cook at the right temperature or for the right amount of time, your food doesn't taste right. Um, if you don't shake hard enough or for long enough, your drink won't taste right. Shaking is really key for making drinks. It's the only real thing we do behind the bar other than measure stuff out. So um, if you get that right, you kind of get everything else right as well. Um, when you shake, it does four things. Um, it mixes all the ingredients together. That was the obvious one. Um, you chill the drink down. So if you shake for about 15 seconds, um, and we'll all shake together uh, today, and I'm gonna time things from the scent, uh, you will be able to get that drink. You should be able to get it down to at least about sort of minus two um, if your ice is at zero degrees when it goes in. If you're getting ice from the freezer, then it's gonna be lower than that. Um, and that's key. So the harder you shake and the longer you shake, the colder that temperature, which means your drink stays iced for a longer period of time, which I think everybody should be able to agree in this weather, but I'm assuming that you're based in the UK or um, in the south of the UK anyway, um, a cold drink is definitely a good thing. Uh, the third thing it does um, is it dilutes the drink. So water from the ice ends up as a constituent part of that cocktail, and it's really important. Um, and then the last thing it does is it adds a little bit of texture to the drink as well. Um, anyway, when you shake, key, um, you want to make your arms move through about 90 degrees when you shake. When you've got that distance travelled, sorted, then you want to shake as hard and as fast as you can. So the most important thing is the distance of that sh um, shaker travels, and then you want to go, um, you want to shake it like you hate it. One of the best quotes I've come across uh, for shaking a drink um, is from a from the kid bartender from the Savoy cocktail, uh, Savoy cocktail, so the Savoy Hotel, uh, from about a hundred years ago, um, Harry Craddock, and he said that when you're shaking a cocktail, you're shaking to wake it up, not rock it to sleep. Um, so doing this doesn't actually do anything. You've got to really give it um, a, a little bit of effort in there. So that is on shaking. Um, I'm going to give measurements in milliliters. Uh, if anybody is in the United States, um, I'll do ounces as well, uh, just for a laugh. Uh, if you don't have anything to measure with, um, I would just grab a glass and use the ratios of ingredients. The most important thing um, for cocktails is that the ratio of the ingredients stays the same. Um, mills or ounces are just a convenient way for us to remember what those ratios are. Um, so don't get held up on the, um, the mills. Um, uh, by all means, go off piece and just um, sort of eyeball it. Also, with this drink, you've got a fair amount of wriggle room uh, if you do make mistakes. Um, I would also recommend putting slightly less sugar than you think you will need. I will give the measurement that I'm going to use. Um, feel free to tone that down a little bit. If you've made your own sugar syrup at home, be aware that that may not be as sweet as a normal sugar syrup. You may need to add a little bit more sweetness into that drink. When you do that, what I would recommend you do is just get a teaspoon um, and just uh, put about half a teaspoon of sugar syrup and stir that into the drink when it's in the finished glass. 
Um, on glassware, I am going to use for my daiquiri what I would refer to as being a short stemmed cocktail glass. Um, it's basically anything with a stem on. Um, I think wine glasses are quite nice to drink cocktails out of if you don't have a, um, a cocktail glass. Um, per se. Um, martinis really probably more classic for this drink. I'm just using one of these glasses because I like drinking out of these glasses. Um, if you want to put ice in it, go for it. Um, I don't see any issue with putting ice in cocktails at all, no matter what the drink. Um, I really think that ice in drinks is very much a personal preference. Um, some people prefer it, some people don't. Um, I've learned that I don't like ice in drinks. I will be straining the ice out um, when I make this drink. Uh, I guess the other thing to touch on as well, um, I don't know if any of you are going for a zero alcohol option. Um, uh, for those of you that like um, uh, dabbling with that, uh, we are at a very fortunate time in history. Um, I say we, uh, I am one of those weird people that really likes the taste of drinking straight spirits. Um, I have a bottle of gin in the freezer. Uh, I very often just pour myself straight um, chilled gin into a glass and sip that. Uh, rum, whiskey, you name it, I drink it straight. However, I don't like being drunk that much, um, as um, Anastasia will probably um, back me up on. Uh, and I've always sort of said that if I can, if I can drink my favourite spirit um, and have it taste identical to that, but to, for it to have zero alcohol, I think I would probably choose that about 80 to 90% of the time. Um, and where zero alcohol spirits are, um, uh, and it's really been led by Seedlip uh, in the UK, um, I like to think of it, it, it's where sort of vegan meat was about 10 years ago, and that it was pretty rubbish, but things were going in the right direction. And now we've got Beyond Burgers and Impossible Burgers, which are amazing. If you haven't tried them, um, I'm not vegan. Uh, I eat meat. I'm a omnivore. Um, I would seriously recommend getting your hands on a Beyond Burger, cooking it yourself at home. Um, if somebody handed it to me, I'm not sure I would be able to tell that it wasn't meat um, if they didn't tell me. It's quite, uh, quite amazing what people can do. And I'm hoping that that same tech is going to find its way into spirits at some stage in the future. In the same way that we've got great tasting zero alcohol beer um, and rubbish tasting zero alcohol wine, except for one or two sneaking in. Um, anyway, uh, I think that the best thing that we should do now um, is probably go start making a drink. Um, the, I guess the story behind a daiquiri, um, a daiquiri was allegedly invented by a gentleman called Jennings Cox on the southern coast of Cuba um, in 1898. Uh, in 1898, something momentous happened in Cuba, and that was this. Uh, that was the American army uh, landing in the war against Spain um, and capturing Cuba um, back from the Spanish, uh, ironically. Um, uh, and where they landed, this beach behind me, is actually Daiquiri Beach. Now, the story behind Jennings Cox um, is that he was uh, working in a mine. He was uh, put there by the American military, copper mine. Uh, he was here holding a cocktail evening uh, for said American military. Um, he ran out of gin, he ran out of lemons, he started making a drink with the local rum and the local limes. They said, what is it? And he said, uh, uh, um, and just named it after the nearest town, which was the town of Daiquiri. Um, sadly, the town of Daiquiri is no longer there. Daiquiri Beach is obviously still there. Um, but unless you are a member of the Cuban military uh, on a R and R break, um, or visiting a Cuban rehab center, that beach is blocked to you. So you need to be in uh, one of two fairly niche groups, uh, which I truly hope no one on this class is on. Um, so let's make the drink. It's gonna make me more interesting, I promise. Okay, so uh, I've got my shaker. If you've got one of these two piece shakers, you wanna put all the liquid in the smaller half of the shaker. Um, so I'm gonna do that and put that just there. So you should just be able to see, I might just, Tilt that down a little bit. There we go. Okay, the first ingredient um, I'm going to put into a daiquiri is going to be rum. I'm going to put in 550 mils of rum. So 550 mils of rum, or you could put in two ounces if you're working in ounces, or you could put in one large shot glass of rum, fill it all the way up to the top. So in goes my rum. We do a lot of these classes where we send out all the ingredients um, and we do some classes where we, we just 
tell you what to sort of buy like we've done tonight. Um, the key difference is when we send you stuff, we can send out all these weird and wonderful drinks. So we do a, a, a standard rum class like this, we'll do a daiquiri and an old fashioned um, and uh, maybe a pina colada. But if we're sending boxes, we'll do zombies and Mai Tais and all sorts of weird and wonderful things with uh, bizarre ingredients. Anyway, um, so we've got the rum in there. The next thing I'm gonna put in there is going to be lime juice. And I'm going to put in half as much lime juice as rum. So half as much lime juice as rum going into that shaker. Um, I'm using one of these things. Uh, this is called a lime or lemon squeezer or a citrus squeezer or a Mexican elbow. Um, I used to think of that term was rather derogatory for a long time. Uh, only every single Mexican I've ever known has referred to these things as a Mexican elbow. Um, and I'm a bit more relaxed about it now. Um, if you do have one of these things, these are amazing. I would recommend getting one. Um, Amazon and eBay sell them. Uh, a key thing to remember if you do get one is that when you put the um, citrus in, you put it in juice side down, not the other way up. If you put it in juice side up, um, which is kind of what the shape of the implement leads you to believe, bad things happen with juice squirting places. So juice side down. Uh, I'm going to measure my juice. I'm not going to squeeze that straight into the shaker. And the key reason for that is that I have got very old lines. Um, one thing... I really like um, about making drinks is using whole citrus and squeezing that to order for the drink. Mother Nature is brilliant at pre-packaging portion control, um, especially for cocktails. So it's really good in that respect. Um, and limes will live in that bottom drawer in your fridge for weeks, if not months, um, without going off. They are magical little things. The only thing I have noticed though, is that over time, the amount of juice um, shrinks. I have no idea why. Um, I would need to ask a horticulturist or something. But anyway, so in my shaker, um, I've got 50 mils of uh, rum. I've got 25 mils of lime juice or half as much lime juice as rum. The last ingredient going into my shaker is sugar syrup. Um, I made this just with caster sugar and um, uh, cold tap water. Um, I often buy it. Uh, if I'm making it at home. Um, so, and the only reason for that is um, I get sort of consistency day after day. Um, the one thing I would say, if you do make sugar syrup at home, only try and make it as much as you'll need for that day. Um, in my experience, it doesn't keep for very long periods of time, even if you refrigerate it. It's got a nasty habit of growing things on. Anyway, um, so I'm going to put in, I want to put in 12 and a half mils of sugar syrup or half as much sugar syrup as lime. So my recipe is going on a ratio basis, four parts rum, two parts lime juice, one part sugar syrup. So if I'm going 50 mils of rum, 25 mils of lime juice, 12 and a half mils of prox of sugar syrup, um, or two ounces of rum, one ounce of uh, lime juice, and half an ounce of sugar syrup. Um, it's probably a, an easier way of measuring it. So um, for my 12 and a half, that is gonna be two and a half teaspoons of sugar syrup. So that is all in. Right, uh, that is everything going into the shaker. Um, what I'd love for you to do, and we're gonna load that up with ice. Um, it's really good if we all shake at the same time. Um, uh, if you don't wanna turn your camera on, if you do turn the sound on, then we will really hear um, the sound of everybody shaking, which is nice. It makes you feel a little bit like you're in the bar. Those of you that haven't rushed out to achieve that yet. Um, anyway, I'm going to put about as much ice into that shaker as this kind of covers it. So the ice is sticking out the top of the, um, uh, the liquid. Well, for me, that is about eight cubes of ice or about as much ice as you can put in a teacup. Um, it's pretty much ideal. Um, I'm going to close that and get ready to shake. So in that shaker, you should have rum, lime, sugar syrup. You should have ice in there as well. Um, I've, John and uh, Daniel, if you want to hold up your shakers when you're ready to go, just so we know. Okay, brilliant. You're right with that, John. Fantastic. Okay, so shaking all together in three, two, one, go. There we go. 
Um, if you have one of these, no matter what type of shaker you use, always use this if you can. Um, so take the whole top of that, just sit that in coil side down so it doesn't wriggle around. And I'm just going to strain that into my glass. And that just keeps all the ice behind inside the shaker. Um, you could garnish that with a bit of lime on the rim. Um, I really like using dehydrated uh, um, in cocktails. So I'd often um, sit one of those just on top. Um, if I was uh, in a bar, I'm serving this to somebody. Um, you get a little bit of color. Um, you should be able to see a little slight orange tinge to my drink. That's because I used an aged rum, um, the Mount Gay. Um, if you use a, a Bacardi Carta Blanca, it's obviously going to be um, more of a white color, um, or the color of the lime juice, essentially. Um, and it will be a nice opaque color regardless. Um, that is our daiquiri. Cheers, everybody. Now, I guess the next key thing about daiquiris is that um, if it was invented on the southern coast of Cuba, this place behind me is its spiritual home. Um, this is um, La Floridita uh, in Havana in Cuba. Um, it has been around for decades and decades and decades and decades and decades and decades. Um, and I don't know if you can see the fridge, but it says the cradle of the daiquiri. Um, on the fridge behind me. Um, I don't know if you've been to um, Cuba or Havana. Uh, Havana is one of my favorite cities on the planet. It is so much fun. Um, the people that live there, generally all throughout Cuba, are really lovely, very hospitable, very fun people to hang around. Um, this bar is very famous, um, uh, partially because it was frequented by a certain Ernest Hemingway, as were most bars on the planet um, uh, between about sort of 1920 and 1960, but this bar in particular. Um, and just down the back there, you might just be able to make out a um, life-size brass sculpture um, of, certain, uh, of Ernest Hemingway sitting at the end of the bar. Um, and that was his standard seat. Now, um, my favorite Ernest Hemingway daiquiri story um, involves the bar behind me in La Florida. Um, and uh, this, the story goes, as was recounted by his friend Guillermo, um, is that one day um, uh, Hemingway was supposed to go out fishing, uh, but bad weather turned his boat uh, back into harbor. Um, uh, he picked up his friend Guillermo, and the two of them headed in and sat, sat down at the bar at La Florida at 10.30 in the morning. Um, where they didn't leave the bar um, until it closed, except for the occasional trip to the can, and during which they both consumed 17 double daiquiris. Now, Hemingway used to drink something called a double daiquiri, um, which is basically the daiquiri you've got now, only with twice as much rum. Um, rum and most booze barely touched the sides with Hemingway, so he made up for it by just putting a ton more in. Now, 17 double daiquiris is the equivalent of about two and a half bottles of rum per person, um, which is a truly frightening amount of booze. Um, but the scariest thing about this is that Guillermo then goes on to write, the next day we met back up at La Floridita at 12. Both of us felt fine. Neither of us had a hangover. We each had three more double daiquiris. And that is a bit that scares me. It gives you an idea of just how much people used to drink uh, back then, or just how much human we used to drink anyway. Um, so I would say cheers to Cuba, cheers to human way, cheers to you for joining me tonight and learning how to make a daiquiri. Um, I imagine that Anastasia will probably get the recipe for this if any of you uh, have forgotten. Um, the easiest way to remember it is four, two, one. Um, four, two, one. And just think four parts rum, two parts lime, uh, one part sugar. Does anybody have any questions at all? You can put them in the chat. Um, if you uh, uh, don't want to unmute yourself and fire away, otherwise interrupt. Pretend you're in a bar and I'm a very bored looking bartender with nothing to do who doesn't want to polish any more glasses or clean anything or do anything other than answer questions. Brilliant. Okay. Um, other things I would say, um, if you do really like rum, um, one thing I love about this drink is that pretty much any type of rum will work in this, as I mentioned before, but you can really play around with that. Um, so there's some really fantastic flavored rums floating around at the moment. And I say fantastic. Um, uh, Plantation uh, does a absolutely incredible pineapple rum. 
Um, so if you literally just swap uh, the rum that we use for pineapple rum in this drink, you end up with a pineapple daiquiri. Um, I guess the next big question I normally get asked about this drink is how do you make a frozen daiquiri? Um, it is essentially exactly what we did now, only you put it in a blender. Only I would double the amount of sugar. Um, you're also going to double the amount of ice you put in there. So if you put in uh, one teacup full of ice for one cocktail, I would recommend probably putting two to maybe even three teacups of ice. You're going to have to play around a bit uh, with the amount of ice. Um, in my experience, it's dependent on the blender you're using, the type of ice you're using, and how cold your ice is. Um, as to how to get that perfect sort of slushy snow consistency. Um, and to be perfectly honest, that just means that if you do want to discover that, you've got a really fun weekend planned um, with some friends, a blender and several bottles of rum. Um, if then uh, you want to go down that road of making um, your own flavoured daiquiris, your banana daiquiris, your strawberry daiquiris are probably the two most famous ones. Mango daiquiris, I think, are incredible. Um, for a banana daiquiri, I would literally just throw a whole banana in there as well as the ingredients um, I just told you. So um, a frozen daiquiri, instead of it being four, two, one, I would go four, two, two. I've said four, two, two instead of two, one, one, just to not confuse you. Um, so four, two, two, um, and then throw in a whole banana if you want to make a banana daiquiri. If you want to make a strawberry daiquiri, slightly more complicated. You can use whole strawberries and you should. Um, I would recommend about four, although strawberries come in all shapes and sizes, as do bananas, I guess. Um, but the other thing that I would do is I would actually use a strawberry syrup instead of a sugar syrup in there to get that flavor of strawberry in there. Um, and you want to double the amount, but you're going to have to play around with that again based on the strawberries and the ice. Strawberries don't have a lot of flavor that carries through when we make cocktails. It's a, a, bizarrely, it's a slightly more subtle flavor. When you put other ingredients in, they tend to mask it, which is why I would use a strawberry syrup. Um, and the other thing as well, um, I'm doubling the amount of sugar I'm putting in there. Um, because of when you add a lot more ice, you dilute it, um, and it's that sugar that helps pick up that flavor and essentially season the drink. Um, we use sugar in cocktails in the same way that you use salt in food um, to help bring out all the flavors um, that are hiding in them. So that's how you make a strawberry daiquiri or banana daiquiri. Um, mango, I love in a daiquiri. I think it works really well. It's a really sweet fruit, so it brings that sweetness into the drink. It's got a really strong flavor. Um, avocado. Avocado daiquiris, I kid you not. Um, if you chuck in a whole avocado um, and blend that with lime um, and sugar, you end up with an absolutely delicious drink. Um, I attempted to serve that in a bar I was working in a very long time ago. And I think in, for about the month that we had on the menu, we sold exactly zero um, avocado daiquiris. Um, but it is definitely worth playing around with it. Um, it actually works really, really well. Um, I can remember going to Sri Lanka years ago um, and they used to make fruit smoothies with avocado. Um, they used to call it butter fruit uh, there, um, and I had way too many. Um, anyway, I guess that's my class. Um, uh, thank you all for coming along. Um, have a wonderful evening. Make yourself more daiquiris. Play around, try it with different rums. If you go into a bar and fancy drinking daiquiris, try it with a different rum each time you have one, and you'll really learn the difference in flavors between the rums. It's a really excellent vehicle. Uh, for learning more about the rum because there aren't a hell of a lot of other flavors going on there and there are more subtle flavors in the rum to hide behind um, which for me is a good thing um, anyway um, i guess i will hand you back to anastasia um, it's been a pleasure i hope we see some of you for our regular classes we do one every two weeks on a friday um, uh, with details at uh, goatchelsea.com um, for all the different types of classes we do anyway everybody have a wonderful evening um, take care and bye-bye